Hi guys, it's time for us to wrap up the hottest automotive news from this week. The biggest news of course came in from the largest manufacturer in India, Maruti Suzuki. The Maruti Suzuki Grand Vitara made its global debut this week with a 1.5 litre strong hybrid powertrain sourced from Toyota mated to an eCVT gearbox that promises to be extremely frugal, returning a claimed mileage of 27.97 kilometers to the litre. The hybrid will also offer up to 25 km driving range in its electric-only mode. The SUV also comes with an all-wheel drive option, dubbed as the Old Grip in Maruti Suzuki lingo. Apart from the strong hybrid powertrain, the SUV will also offer a 1.5-litre mild hybrid engine, made it to a 5-speed manual or a 6-speed automatic gearbox. Like the Toyota Highrider, this SUV too gets a head-up display, panoramic sunroof, infotainment with wireless charger and wireless connectivity. The SUV packs in plenty of safety tech as well, including up to six airbags, 360-degree parking camera, ESP, hill hold assist and tyre pressure monitoring system. With prices expected to be announced in September, the Grand Vitara will go up against the likes of the Hyundai Creta and the Kia Seltos. Those are the best sellers in that space. Now, Citro India had promised us a very affordable C3 and they have somewhat delivered on that promise. The C3 is priced at 5.71 lakh rupees for the base 1.2 litre variant, going up to 8.6 lakh rupees for the 1.2 litre turbo variant. These are introductory prices, which sound great when you consider it undercuts the rivals like Tata Punch and Renault Kaiger, but it does miss out on a few features like central lock, unlock button for doors, rear defoggers, rear washer and wiper, and a few more. It does, however, offer dual airbag and rear parking sensors. Another miss is an automatic gearbox option. Citro India is offering 56 customizable options in the mix to make the car look and feel more premium though, all of which could bring up the car cost to match the rivals or even charge a higher premium. We do have a video about that as well on our channel, do check it out. Marte Suzuki has swapped the Espresso's engine for a more frugal 1-litre dual-jet motor from the Celerio. It now makes 67 PS of power and 89 Newton meters of torque. The automatic variants now get hill hold assist and ESP. These updates have made the hatchback more expensive than before. The base manual trim now starts at 4.25 lakh rupees against the 4 lakh pricing it started off with, and the top of the line automatic trim charges 70,000 rupees more than before. The Atho 450X and the Atho 450 Plus Gen 3 have received upgrades in the form of a bigger battery. A 3.7 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack from a 2.9 kilowatt hour battery pack that has substantially increased the riding range from 116 kilometers to 146 kilometers as claimed by the Indian driving cycle. The electric scooters now have 100 by 80 wider rear tires and new 12 inch MRF tires, which Atho claims leads to improved ride and handling. Updating to a 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of ROM, Ada believes that the user interface will be quicker than it was in terms of switching between applications and other things. We've tested the scooter recently in Bengaluru. Do check out the review on our YouTube channel. And Hero Motorcycles has just launched the Hero X Pulse 204V Rally Edition for a limited period of time. Priced at 1.52 lakh rupees, the bookings are open only from 22nd to 29th of this month. This motorcycle gets fully adjustable telescopic fork with 250mm travel, preload and rebound adjustable monoshock that takes the rear wheel travel up to 220mm, handlebar razors and a large side stand. Everything else on the motorcycle remains the same, including the mechanicals. And Bhavish Agarwal, the CEO of Ola Electric, has announced via Twitter that they will be investing close to 4,000 crore rupees to set up a 11-acre facility in Bengaluru, which will focus on the research and development of electric vehicle batteries. The Ola Electric Battery Innovation Centre will have an automated assembly line for cell production on non-destructive test lab and equipment with cell and pack imaging, nanoscale analysis and molecular dynamics simulation. C-ray spectroscopy and Gen 3 CT scan machines and electrode fabrication unit for building anodes and cathodes from different materials and designs. The batteries will be produced at Ola's Giga Factory in Tamil Nadu with an initial capacity of 20 GWh. Ola Electric says that this facility will be up and running by next month. That's all the news we have for you from this week. We'll catch you next week as well. Until then, drive and ride safe. Mm.